Hello, this is Michael Osborne with WebUcator. In this video, I'm going to show you a solution that Jeevanandam M came up with for querying Active Directory using C Sharp and the .NET framework. Now, Jeevanandam agreed to let us create this video showing his solution, which is available as an article on his blog at the URL shown here. Okay, so our goal in this solution is to retrieve a object from the domain containing information about a user. When we query the domain, we're going to pass in one of two things, either a username or an email address. Now, in order to accomplish this, we first of all need a little bit of information. We need an LDAP address, so this could be like the IP address, the domain controller, for example. We'll also need some credentials that we're going to use in order to authenticate to the domain. Then there are a couple of classes we need to be familiar with in order to interact with the domain. The first class we care about is what's known as a directory entry class. Directory entry specifies an entry point within the domain that we will start at, if you will. Then we will use a directory searcher class. Now, directory searcher is the one that actually does the heavy lifting. It will talk to the domain, pass in the information, and retrieve back from the domain a search request or I'm sorry, a search result class, which will encapsulate the information about the user. So let's go take a look at some code. The first thing we have here is a very simple little form. This form consists of several sections. The first section allows me to put in credentials that I will use when I authenticate against the domain. The second section allows me to enter the name of the domain that I'm querying. The third section allows me to enter the user that I would like information about. Now notice when you put in the username, it can be in the form of a username or an email address, either one. And then we simply click the search button. When we click the search button, it will go out, try to find the user, and assuming that user is found, it will then display it in the user information box down at the bottom. Now the magic happens when you click the search button. So let's go take a look at the code behind this form to see what's going on when you click that button. The first thing you should notice here is that at the class level, we have declared an instance of a directory searcher object. We declare it at the class level because we're going to uh, load it up in one method and then pass it around to another method in order to actually do the work. So when you click the button, what you're doing is you're firing the button search click event handler. So let's start here and kind of step through this code. What button search click does is first it checks to ensure that all the fields on the form have been properly filled out. In other words, they have information in them. Assuming they have, it will then call the get info method, passing in the username, the password, and the address. Now, Again, if a field hasn't been filled out properly, we're going to get a little message box pop up that's going to say, I'm sorry, you need to fill in some more information. So let's go take a look at the get info method that's called from button search click. Get info begins by setting our cursor to a wait status, and it makes that panel in that bottom box visible. Essentially what we're doing here, when that panel is visible, the fields behind it cannot be seen, and the fields behind it are what contain the actual user information. So we're hiding that information until we actually retrieve a user. Then we declare an instance of a search result object, and we set it to null. Then we take a look at what's in the user search user text box. Now if the string in search user contains an at sign, we assume that that is an email address. If it does not, then we assume it is a username. And we will call the appropriate method either search by email or search by username based on that decision. Now I want you to notice that in both cases, regardless of which method we call, we need to pass into it a directory searcher object. So in the call, in the parentheses there, we call the get directory searcher method, passing a username, a password, a domain, and the text search user. In other words, the user we're going to search for. So let's go first look at the get directory searcher method. What get directory searcher does is it declares a instance, a new instance of a directory searcher object. And notice to the constructor of that directory searcher, we pass an instance, a new instance, of a directory entry object. Remember the directory entry defines my starting point. So in this case, we defined a directory entry and the uh, string is LDAP plus a domain and we're passing in the username and the password. 
So that will construct our directory searcher. It will pass it back to the get info method. Then the get info method will call either search by email or search by username, passing that directory searcher object in. So let's go take a look at these search methods. First of all, we're going to check the search by username. All we do here is we refer to the directory searcher object that was passed in. We set the filter to object category person, object class is user, and the SAM account name is the username that was passed in. We then specify that the search scope of the directory searcher object is subtree. The server time limit is 90 seconds. And then we call the directory searcher find one method. Now, directory searcher find one should return to us a instance of a search result object that encapsulates the user we're looking for. Now, I want to point out there's another method here, find all, which you can use if you're looking for multiple entities. You can do a find all and it will return a collection of search result objects. Regardless, assuming a user object has been found, it's not null, we will return that user object back to the get info method. Now, the search by email method is virtually identical. The only difference here is that in the filter, we specify a mail address rather than a SAM account. In both cases, we hopefully will find a user and we'll pass that user object back to get info. Get info will check and if the user object is not null, it will call the show user information method, passing that object to the method. So let's go take a look at that real quick. Show user information simply makes the panel invisible so that you can see the fields behind it. And then it loads all those fields with the appropriate information about the user. So let's go run this application and see how it works. I'm going to start in debug mode here, and as soon as it opens up, you'll notice that I have pre-filled some values for the username, the password, and I went ahead and filled in a username to search for. I do, however, need to enter my domain information, so let's go ahead and plug in AdventureWorks, and I'm going to click my search button. And when I do, you'll notice it found Neil Black. Now, in this case, I was searching by the email address because I have neil.black at adventureworks.com. I could also have simply specified Neil's username, which is neil.black. And again, it will find Neil. And I could uh, look for any number of users. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this a little bit. If I put in a username that is not valid, you'll notice that it makes that panel visible, it hides those user fields behind it, and then it says user not found. Okay, thanks again to Jeevanandam for the inspiration for this video. Be sure to check out his blog at the URL shown here for other articles related to .NET development. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it.